seven. Yeah. Question of the day. Is the push to reopen the U.S. economy overshadowing the CDC guidelines? All 50 states have started easing coronavirus related restrictions, even though many of them do not meet federal benchmarks, leading public health experts to warn that a second wave of infections could be imminent. Mm. Joining us to have this conversation and to discuss her petition on change.org to provide us priority service protections to health care workers that might be affected by this is expert philanthropist. Lorna Johnson. Welcome to the Black Report. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Ms. Johnson, tell us a little bit about your medical expertise. Well, I am a nurse midwife, nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, started off as a registered nurse. Okay. Move on to become a nurse midwife, nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. I have worked uh, with nurses, doctors in all different levels, different capacities, including myself being a clinical professor and a lecturer at UCLA School of Nursing Mm -hmm. and starting a healthcare clinic in the inner inner city of East LA and the underserved communities. So I've been doing this for many years and a lot of nurses just basically rely on me. And so that's my change for dot org petition. Wow. Now you are a nurse, you are a health professional, you are an expert. We want to hear from an expert because we haven't really been hearing from experts. Uh, You know what I mean? We want to know, is this virus under control? No. The short answer is no. I don't think anyone could say it's under control. And of course, I'm speaking just from my own um, opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we are far from that. We just started. um, We're settling down in some places. But as you hear, some places are hot spots here, hot spots there. We don't know. And um, we've been staying at home, um, doing our um, social distancing, washing our hands, doing those things. It's Mm -hmm. helping a bit. But in some areas, where it's whether or not you believe that the virus really exists. Mm. So with that being said, uh, some people feel like it's need to get back or it's greed to get back to reopen the cities. Do you feel like the government's moving too fast? Is the government moving too fast to open yes. or to eradicate it, to help to slow the, the process down, the virus down? Well, uh, maybe a little bit of both of you can speak on that because some feel like they're, they're opening up too soon, you know? Okay, yes. I would say if you we're not moving fast enough to to be able to control the virus, Mm -hmm. the virus is still controlling us very much right now Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of opening up too um, too fast. I think we need to listen to the CDC guideline and the World Health Organization before we make each move. And that's all I can say, because if we get out there too early trying to save the economy, if you kill everybody, there won't be an economy to come back. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we are doing it systematically, orderly, testing, and making sure we're doing the tracing and doing the social distancing, wearing our mask or gloves and staying at home if we can afford to. Absolutely. Now, Ms. Johnson, uh, John Hopkins Center for Health and Security told a United States House Appropriations Subcommittee that none of the states met the criteria needed to start reopening. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, well, the CDC set guidelines. And of course, according to the CDC guideline, none of the states are ready to be open. And yet we have governors that are opening up states and defying orders. Sometimes I wonder, do we live in one America or two America? Mm-hmm. Because it seems like some people believe the virus is, is they, they are prone to the virus or they believe they can get the virus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying to people that look like me, make sure you know that you can get the virus and make sure you protect yourself, stay at home. Many of us don't have the luxury to stay at home, Mm -hmm. but if you have to go to work, try your hardest to use all the precautions that you have in front of you. The virus is in control, and the only control that you have are the basic recommendations that are given to you. Wash your hands, stay at home, wear the mask, wear your gloves, and hand Mm -hmm. washing cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, with that being said, what do you think that we could be facing this summer and what about winter? Well, again, question. what we're facing this summer, nobody really knows. The virus is a new, it's new. Yeah. And so every day you learn something new about it. So you may hear something is good today and something is not so good tomorrow. Right. So because we don't have that control, we must always do or use what we have, what we know mm-hmm. and what we have control of. And I don't think anyone knows what will happen this summer or winter. Mm. Wow. Now tell us, why did you decide to start your healthcare workers petition on change.org? 
again, um, one of the reasons why I've been getting lot, lots of calls from nurses across the country because of because they know me and they trust me. They believe I can do something for them. And so they want a voice. They want someone to have a voice for them. And so I decided to take on this responsibility and to ask people like you to help mm -hmm. me help the nurses. Mm -hmm. They're crying for help. They do not have the proper gear. They're, they're afraid that they're going to take these, this virus home to their family. They're watching people dying in front of them. Families don't have anyone to console them while they're dying. And yet they don't have any grief counseling. Mm -hmm. They don't have any therapy. Mm -hmm. They don't have any health insurance, proper health insurance. Take, for example, this one young lady. She reminds me of myself when I was a young nurse, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Stacy is a young nurse that decided to work in the inner city where she could provide for her own people that looked like her and give the best quality of health care to them. Mm -hmm. She caught the virus and in the hospital that she stayed at mm -hmm. was the hospital she worked and they were not able to care for her properly. They had wow. to transfer her to a different hospital. Yeah. She's pre she was pregnant. She yeah. caught the virus on the job. Mm -hmm. oh. And she had to go, now she had to go to the, to have a C emergency C-section. Oh, She's now man. in a coma today. Oh. And she can't get the proper health care that she needs because their insurance won't cover it. So she will not have the best chance of recovering. That should not be happening in no, America. It should not. Anybody no. that get the virus on the job should be cared for by the system. 100%. And they should get the best possible chance that they have for survival. And yeah. she's not getting it. So I'm here for Stacy, and I hope that you're here to help me to bring about, make noise, and sign the petition, and get our legislator to move so that healthcare workers on the front line fighting this virus will be able to be taken care of and not be given the runaround. Mm. Now, what happens um, if you meet your signature goal on Change.org? Well, that would be awesome. We meet the, and then we go to the legislators. We demand from them because power is a number. Mm. You, I, everybody, America, we control this. And if everybody goes out, sign the petition, speak to your Congress people, speak with your governor, speak with your mayor, mm. then we can get this done now. We need it done now. This is a crisis and we can't wait for tomorrow. The right. legislators are not moving fast enough. People are dying every day. So we have to stop the bleed now. Now. And make Absolutely. sure that we have the legislation that we need. Yeah, we do. Now, Lorna, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on The Black Report. Please stay safe as you continue to do the work of getting frontline workers the protective gear that they need. Thank you so very much. It's such a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you.